Okay, so we're solving a system of equations by substitution. So this is what's called an algebraic method for solving uh, systems. Um, most of the time when, we have, when you have to solve systems of equations, well, let's be honest, at, at the level that we're at, it's usually done on computers. Um, but the methods involved in solving it is what we need to learn. And so here's an example we're going to solve. All right. And it will be a very simple example. So write this down. X equals negative 2. And that's our first equation. The second equation is X plus 3Y equals 4. Okay. So go ahead and write that down. And so if we're solving by substitution, we have to follow a certain number of steps in a certain order. So we're going to go ahead and write those down. So write down the following steps. There's four of them. So these are the steps in the substitution method. Steps in the substitution method. Um, so let's start with our first step. And the first step we actually won't be doing until Wednesday, but I want to have it in the notes. The first step is to solve for either X or Y. So solve for either X or Y. That means we want to get one of our equations so that the x variable or the y variable is all by itself. Fortunately for us, it's already like that, our first equation. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. All of the equations in today, um, all of our systems are going to have one of the equations like that. Okay, so the second step is to substitute into the other equation. That's the main step, actually. Substitute into the other equation. That's our second step. Uh, third step is something we've done quite a bit. You did it in seventh grade, and we've done it a lot in eighth grade. Solve the new equation. So solve the new equation. All right, so go ahead and write that down. I'll give you a minute to catch up with that. Okay. All right. Um, sorry. Next step. And this will be the last step. Uh, substitute once more. So we're going to substitute once more. To get... the value
of the original variable. So I know I had you write a lot there, but that's it. That's the rest is just going to be solving these equations. Okay. So I'll give you a moment to finish writing that. Are you guys ready? Okay. So let's begin. I'm going to zoom in just on this part so we can see it a little better, okay? So I'm going to zoom down, move this over so we can see this part a little better. There. Okay. So here we go. So we have a system of equations. We got x equals negative 2. So if we were to graph that, that would be one of these lines that would go vertically straight up and down through negative 2 on the x-axis. And then we got x plus 3y equals 4. Okay, And that would be just a line with some sort of slope. And it would be actually, I'm doing some mental math here, the y-intercept would be at 1 and 1 third. So that would be just kind of an ugly line to graph the second line. But we're going to do this substitution method-wise, and we're still going to figure out where the two lines cross, okay? So here we go. Now, I want, us, I want you to be active here. Think about this. So here's how this method works. Um, it says solve either for x or y. Like I said, luckily for us, our first equation, do you see it says x equals? That's a freebie. There, we didn't have to do this first step, Okay. We can go right to the second step, which is to substitute. And this is how it works. Take that first equation that already says x equals, in this case, negative 2. And we're going to, wherever you see x in the other equation, we can substitute negative 2. So in other words, you see this negative 2 here? Because that's what x equals, I'm going to rewrite this second equation but I'm going to replace x with negative 2. And that's going to allow me to solve it. Watch. So we're all going to do the following, guys. I'm going to bring down, I'm going to rewrite this equation, but replace x with negative 2 because that's what x equals. Okay? So write this as negative 2 plus 3y equals 4. And you may be wondering, okay, so what's the advantage here? Why is this so much better? I'll tell you why. This new equation, our old equation had x and y in the equation. I can't solve it. I can't figure out for one of the variables if I have two of them in there. But this new one just has y in the equation. And it's just a two-step equation. I've solved those before. We've done these before. In fact, let's do it. Let's solve this equation. Let's get y by itself. So this is a two-step equation. I want to get rid of this negative 2. Add 2 on both sides. Remember we do that? It's just like solving equations now. We're going to add 2 to both sides. Cancel the negative 2 with a positive 2. And let's just bring down the rest of the equation and solve it. 3y comes down. On the other side of the equal sign, we've got 4 plus 2. That's 6. Now it's just a one-step equation. 3y equals 6. I can do that. I can solve it by dividing by 3. Okay. And I get my answer. y equals 6 divided by 3, which is 2. Guess what? I wanted a solution. I got part of my solution. 
Up at the top, I'm going to write solution. And the y portion of the solution is positive 2. I don't know what the x part is, but I'll figure that out soon. Actually, I do know. What's x equal? Negative 2. I'm done. I got the x part, the first number, because it, they told us at the beginning x is negative 2. And I just figured out the y port part right now. That's it. These two lines would cross at negative 2, 2. OK? Any questions? All right, so this is the easiest type of um, substitution equation that I can get. But that's a start. They'll get a little tougher as we go along, okay? You guys ready? Okay, I still see some people looking and writing, so I'm going to give you a moment. Okay, you ready? All right. So we're going to move on and do a few more, okay? All right, here we go. Mm, zoom this thing out. So down here, this will be the first official example. Y equals um, 2X and then X plus Y equals 9. Okay, write this down. So now we're going to solve this system. So I'm going to go back down. Let's see what we got. So I'm looking for a solution. So the first thing we have to do is solve for one of the variables. But like we said, we already got one of the variables all by itself. We have y equals 2x. So we can use that to substitute. In fact, wherever I see y in the equation, guess what I'm going to replace it with? What does y equal? 2x. So in the second equation, instead of x plus y, I'm going to write it as x plus 2x. That's called the substitution step. So I'm going to rewrite that other equation. Here I go. x plus, but not y, what y equals, which is 2x equals 9. Okay. You may be saying, okay, that look, actually looks a little harder. The advantage is I don't have two separate, two different e variables. I just have x's in this equation. I can solve these. Okay. I can combine. Remember combining like terms? If I add x with 2x, what does that make? 3x. This just becomes 3x now. It simplifies to 3x equals 9. Okay? And I can divide that out. Divide by 3. And I get my answer. x equals 9 divided by 3. I got my first answer, or the first half of the answer, I should say. For the solution, I know I'm going to have one. And the x part of that answer is 3. I just have to figure out what the y number is. Okay? So let's do that. Let's work on figuring out what y is. So we're going to figure out what the y portion is. Um, it says substitute once more. So we're going to, this time, do you see, it doesn't say y equals just a number, right? It says y equals 2x. So I want a number. I don't want to put in 2x for y. I want an actual just a number. But I can figure that out. Take that equation. 
and write it here. So I'm going to write y equals 2x, that original equation I worked with. But now I, I, know what two, I know what x equals. What does x equal? Three. three. So instead of saying 2 times x, I can write it as 2 times 3. Six. So I just figured out the second half of my answer, y equals 6. Okay, so there it is. These two lines, if I were to graph them, would cross at 3, 6. Okay, any questions? All right, so I'm going to give you a minute to catch up writing all of that, and we'll go on to another example. So let me ask you, while people are finishing writing, besides two lines intersecting, which I can tell these two lines intersect because they're going to cross at 3 comma 6 if I were to graph them, what else can two lines do? Be parallel, right? That would be no solution. And there's one more option infinity of solutions. That's when the two lines overlap, right? One line overlaps the other, so every point they touch at, and that's an infinite number of points. Well, we're going to see how that happens or how we get that answer here, okay? You guys ready? All right, here we go. We're going to move on to number two. All right, so here we go. X equals 3Y. And then we've got x minus 3y equals 0. OK, write that down. So we got a new system. OK. And we're going to solve this by substitution, mainly because I see I already have one of the variables all by itself, x. It equals 3y. OK. So basically. Since x equals 3y, wherever I see x, I'm allowed to replace x with whatever x equals, in this case, 3y. So let's rewrite that second equation, OK, guys? So I'm going to rewrite this equation here the following way. I'm going to replace x with 3y. Okay, so write that down. I substitute it. Did I do any mistakes there? Is that okay? All I did was replace whatever x is with what it equals, 3y. I ended up with 3y take away 3y equals 0. Well, let's do the math for that. Let's combine that. What do you get when you have 3y take away 3y? 0. Yeah, that's a basic math fact. On the left side of the equation, I have 0 equals, and on the right side, uh, equals zero. Hold on a minute. Go ahead and do that. Write that down. Zero equals zero. So write that down. And did we do something wrong? Did we do anything wrong there, math-wise? You think? Because that looks funny. Right? That doesn't look right, but it's an answer we got. We've got, come across these answers before, and it's going to mean the same thing it meant before. This is a math statement. Sometimes you don't get the answers that we're expecting like this. Everything cancels out. Everything goes away except numbers. So no more variables in either part like we have here. And we end up with some math statement. And math statements are either true or false. And we have to figure out which one we have. So we have the statement 0 equals 0. Is it true that 0 equals 0? Yes. yes, it is. So not only do we have a math statement, I better write that down.
This is a math statement. It's a true math statement. We're going to write that down. It's a true math statement. It is most definitely true that zero equals zero. Therefore, this is how we say therefore in math. When you have a true statement, zero equals zero, negative nine equals negative nine. Basically the same number on both sides of the equal sign. Infinitely many solutions. We have infinitely many solutions. Okay. Well, that means we have lines that overlap. If we were looking at this uh, on a graph, we would see that the both lines overlap each other. Okay. And that's just, that's just what it is. Sometimes that happens, okay? And we got to recognize it if it does happen. You just end up with a true statement. Same number on both sides of the equal sign, okay? So I'll give you a minute to write that. So uh, um, while you're writing and some people are done, I want you, especially if you're done, think about what would a false statement tell us? If a true statement said infinitely many solutions, what would a false statement tell us? What do you think? No solutions, yeah. That's the logical conclusion for that. Okay, you guys ready for the next one? Okay, let's move on. Number three. All right, so number three is the following. Um, y equals 2x and negative 6x plus 3y equals 16. Okay, so write that down. Y equals 2X, and the second equation is negative 6X plus 3Y equals 16. Okay, write that down. Now, let's substitute because we already have Y equals all by itself. So wherever we, we see Y, we're going to replace 2X. So you see this Y in the second equation, 3 times Y? We're going to say 3 times 2x. That's the substitution step. Okay? So let's take this second equation, and we're going to substitute. Here we go. Okay? So we're going to rewrite this as negative 6 times x plus 3 times parentheses Instead of y, we're going to put 2x equals 16. Yes. Not right now. So let's see. Let's see. Let's go ahead and substitute, guys. We did that. Let's see. We get negative 6 times x. 3 times 2x is 6x equals 16. We did everything correctly. It's going to be similar to what we got before, right? We got negative 6x plus 6x. What happens there? If you have negative 6x and you add 6x to that, what's your result? They cancel out. Yeah, they make zero, basically. 
these two combined make zero equals 16. We get another statement. What's the difference about this statement? Zero equals 16. True or false? This one's false. We end up with a false statement. Okay. Therefore, no solution. Okay, so last thing we got to say about this, what is the no solution when we're graphing it? What are we going to expect to see? What kind of lines? You remember? Parallel. They're going to be parallel lines. Okay, we just got one more, guys. Okay, so if you're ready, I'm ready. See a couple people writing. So we'll do this last one, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so this is about as tough as they get, our last one. So I'm going to write it down. Here we go. Um, number four. Uh, let's say y equals negative x plus 4. And then our second equation is 5x plus 6y equals 13. Okay, so write that down. y equals negative x plus 4. Then 5x plus 6y equals 13. Okay, and we have to substitute. We already have y equal, so we're going to take advantage of this. And wherever we see y in the other equation, we're going to replace it with negative x plus 4. Okay, so let's write that down. We're going to rewrite this equation. Okay, here we go. So we're going to write this as 5x plus 6 times y, but y is negative x plus 4. That's what we're going to replace. So we're going to put parentheses. And in the parentheses, we're going to write negative x plus 4. Okay, equals 13. So write that down. Okay, and guess what we have to do to get rid of those parentheses? Gosh, I'm getting a lot of emails. We're going to distribute. To get rid of the parentheses, we have to distribute. So a few more steps on this one. 5x plus 6 times negative x is negative. 6x and 6 times 4 is 24 equals 13. Okay. So now I have to combine like terms. What do I get when I combine 5x and negative 6x? I am adding a positive with a negative. Same sign, add and keep, but different sign, subtract. Negative 1. So I end up with negative 1x plus 24 equals 13. So let's solve this two-step equation. Let's get rid of the 24. Okay, once again, I have, well, first I got negative 1x. And then I've got 13 and negative 24, and that's going to be negative 11. 
Okay. Let's get rid of this negative one. What's my final answer for X? Positive 11. Okay. Positive 11. Now, we have half of our answer. We know that the X part is 11. So write that down. X is 11. I'm going to zoom this up just a little bit so I can fit it all in. Um, I still have to figure out what Y is, but that's not going to be too hard. Uh, let me write down the solution. The solution, I know that X part is 11. I have to figure out what Y is. Go back to that very first equation. Okay. Let's go back to this very first equation and write down Y equals negative X plus 4. And we already know what X is. So we can write that down. Y equals, it's negative X, but X is 11, so we get negative 11 plus 4. Okay. So let's see what that's going to be. Negative 11 plus 4 is negative 7. So we just figured out what Y is. Negative 7. So the final answer is 11, negative 7. That's about as tough as they get. Okay. All right. Any questions? All right. Anybody still writing this down? Okay. I'll give you a little bit more time. Okay, everyone open up your Chromebooks, please. And the assignment is a Cami assignment. Uh, okay, we'll have to wait till the pass comes back, okay? All right. Frank, you're done? Okay.